Hey guys, this is Jake from Stay Fun. This episode, we're gonna be working on the trim out. In our last video on the camper, we got the rough end complete. Make sure you check that out down in the description below if you haven't already. Now we're gonna be doing a trim out. We got some stick on tile backsplash here. And go right along in there. Some marble contact paper for the countertop. We'll also be using that for the table here and a couple side tables for the countertop and for the bed. We painted our stove top with this uh, high heat black and we painted our soap dispenser and water faucet with a Krylon black and clear polyurethane. Same thing with the cabinet hardware. We've got it all ready to go. We've primed all of the cabinet doors with this primer here. We're gonna be painting all of the white cabinets with this white paint here. The cabinets under the sink will actually be painted with a jack pine green and the rest of the interior will be painted with a flat interior paint to cover up all of the grub marks and mess ups from where I didn't do so great putting everything in. I think we're probably gonna get started here in the kitchen so let's get to it. As y'all saw I took these Stuck them across the bottom, put a uh, put the clamp across them, and cut them nice and flat. And that worked out really well. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the three that are going under the window. I'm gonna cut them out to six and a half inches tall, and then we'll do the side pieces at the measurements for five and six inches on either side. So that's our two sides. Here's the three for our middle. So we'll measure this out, clamp it down, cut it out. I think that's looking pretty good. Let's go try it down the side. That's looking good. It's gonna look a lot better once we get this trim board on around the window and the countertop in place. But I'm pretty impressed with this stick on stuff. Seems pretty solid for a camper anyway. I think we're about ready to cut the countertop out now. Luckily it's a uh, four foot wide and it's a four by eight board. So I only have to cut the 22 inch depth. What I got here is the uh, kitchen sink. I actually haven't seen it yet. Emily picked it out. So let's take a look at it together. They provided a template for where the cutouts need to be. And this is actually meant as an under cabinet sink. I'm just gonna cut it out, set it down for the lip, and act as if it's a uh, above cabinet sink. That ought to work. Let's work on the cutouts for the sink and the stove. When I had this inside and test fitting it, I laid it down and I took my pen and I marked out where all of the studs are that I obviously am not gonna be able to cut a hole through. And we're gonna try and place the sink as close to this corner as we can. And we'll try and stick the stove as close to this side as we can. Since I have these marked, I'll go ahead and take the level straight edge continue that till I get a nice corner here and we'll place a template on there and figure out where we want to cut out that one fits nicely that one fits nicely now okay there's a sink hole I'm gonna measure it with the sink first make sure the sink's not bigger all right so I should be able to cover all my lines with the sink all right now I don't feel too bad anymore here we go That's pretty good. Well, I'd say that looks pretty good. Here we got the sink and the stove. I have to drill a couple holes for the faucet and the soap dispenser. But otherwise, we're looking good. Starting up a lot more like a camper now. A lot more finish. That's looking good. Hit the like button. Let me know you like it too. I'm gonna take the uh, countertop here. We're actually gonna take a trim board and stick it on there so it has a nice thick uh, look to it. Make it look like a lot thicker countertop board than it is. So I need to measure this out, cut it out, and pray that I measured twice and only cut once. 
So we've got the old table. I'm gonna use it as a template to cut out the board for the new table. And we're actually gonna screw them together so that we have a nice thick table surface. That'll be a lot stronger. So right now I'm gonna mark out this table onto my sheet. Time to get started on some window trim. Let's make this look nice. Boards are cut. Let's see if I got them straight and if I got the uh, angles right and if I got them the right length. A lot of ifs. What I did there with the punch is drill them in just slightly below flat so that we can put a touch of caulk in that hole and it'll be a nice flat, clean look. Well, Let's measure for another one. Well, I got them cut out. Let's see if they fit. I think it looks pretty good. Let's move over to the other side. This window is actually a little bit special. I'm gonna do a double layer of trim on the bottom side so that our table bracket will mount to the trim. I'm gonna do my best to make it look clean. So what I'm gonna do is take a piece and make it flat, both ends, and go the exact length of the window. And then the angled corners will go all the way to the bottom piece of trim. So hopefully it matches up nicely and provides a, a nice clean look. Hit the like button down below if you, uh, you like the way that turned out? I'm pretty happy with it. Those table brackets ought to fit nicely on there. And it still looks pretty good. Well, we're about to uh, attach this cabinet top here. Emily actually used this marble contact paper. There's a link to this down in the description below. It looks pretty good. I mean, it's kind of hard to tell where the seams are. We made sure to put them in small areas. Very happy with the way it turned out. So we're about to attach it permanently to the cabinet top and then we'll put the sink and the stove in and faucet and all and it's going to start looking like uh like a pretty serious remodel Sink's looking good now. Well, I think it's about time we'll cover up some of our junk. So we're gonna put the cabinet doors in. That's what I got those self-piercing screws for. And there's tiny things so they won't go all the way through the board. But they're black so they match the bracketry quite nicely. So the decision whether to put the cabinet hardware on the cabinet first or the door first is kind of dependent upon whatever you want it to be. In my case, I decided to put it on the cabinet first here because the door itself is actually a new panel board piece and I don't have any previous location holes to base it off of. Cabinet hardware, you can see the previous location holes. So I just stick the hardware in place, put the board on it, and then zap the cabinet hardware onto the cabinet door. And I'll put the door up, snap that on. Now I can screw it directly into that cabinet door and I know it's in the right spot. Let's measure this door out real quick. Let's see. Let's go cut those suckers out. thing I wasn't anticipating is this upper piece actually sits back a little further because this board here isn't as thick as the panel board here. So I may actually take a small strip of this board to bring the thickness out level with the panel board. Let's see. Let's go trim this other board. Well I'm honestly not sure what I'm going to do with this trim piece. 
So I know I need to cut out about that much right there. Then I'm gonna take my oscillating tool and just kind of cut down along the line, maybe score it right across there and see if I can chisel it out okay. Let me know in the comments below how you would do it. All right, let's give her a try. That is good. Here's what the door frame looks like. That part right there I am especially proud of. Pretty good corners. Nice straight lines. So working on this front uh, window here, and y'all probably can't see on the camera, but this has a little bit of a curve right through there, which means my trim piece, I'll stick it up there, doesn't really fit well in that corner and leaves a massive gap on the back side. So what I've done, just test out. I've made this little accordion looking thing, and I can kind of press that into shape, make that corner a whole lot better, and fill in the kind of big space. Now we are gonna have a lot of gaps right there to fill with caulk, but I think this is how I'm gonna go. So let's go cut that. I think that should be enough enough depth to make that corner that I need to. Yeah, these things sufficiently soaked down. Let's see if we can make that curve with them. All right, here's one of them. That's looking a lot better than it was. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the rest of this window and then uh, we'll move on to something else. We're gonna go ahead and get the table leg on the table. We've also got a couple other pieces that need to go here. This is a metal strip to kind of help support it on the back side, keeps it from wobbling around too much against the uh, bracketry. We've also got the table leg that will go on the bottom side, and then a couple brackets that we're gonna be using to mount the table to the windowsill. So we took the old table, and we laid it out on top of a new board, cut it out, and then we screwed those two together. And Emily was able to paint this to make sure it was nice flat white beforehand and then uh, contact paper this marble on top to make it look as good as it does now. And now we're gonna go ahead and put it together and set it up inside the camper. So I'll start out with this top piece here, then we'll screw it in from the back side, flip the whole table over, get the leg positioned, and get the brackets positioned. Now I wanna make sure that I position the leg far enough forward that uh, when we fold it up, it doesn't hit anything. That should give plenty of support to the table itself. So I don't expect these small screws to have a problem. I think that'll be just fine. Because it's just going to be support from the bottom, from the floor, to keep the table standing up. Now these brackets, the way they work, this portion of the bracket will be mounted to the windowsill. This portion of the bracket will be mounted to the bottom of the table. And then when we put the table into the bracket, it keeps it straight out like that. Nice thing about that style is it can't shift left or right. Feels pretty sturdy. I think it looks pretty good. What y'all think? Well guys, we got the sink back in place now that we've got the clear coat done and uh, it's time to hook up the drain, which we bought a new one from Lowe's. A uh, very basic, cheap drain fits into this sink and then it actually has the correct connection on the bottom side to hook into the old drain system we already had. So that's a plus. We'll get this hooked up, then we'll move on to something like toaster oven maybe. Got this stuff called plumber's putty. And according to the instructions for the drain, you're supposed to apply that around the inside. And then the rubber gasket goes on the bottom side. So let's get a little bit of this, apply it around the outside, slap our drain in. Water's hooked up. I'm gonna go turn it on. Y'all let me know if you see any leaks. Y'all see any drip drips anywhere? Hot. Still looking good. Cold. Well, they look okay. Let's see what the drain does when I turn the water on. So right now the uh, plug is stopped up. So that'll let me know if it's gonna leak around this seal. I'll let it sit there for a minute, make sure it's not leaking there. And we'll uh, 
We'll unstop it and see if it leaks on any part of the drain system. Tell you what, Oliver's gonna be wondering what's going on when it starts leaking on him under the truck. He's laying right underneath where it drains out. Waterfall. Ooh, wonderful. No water leaks. Let's go ahead and let the sink drain and we'll see if there's any leaks from this connection here. see any water sink is just about oh just finished draining no water leaks well guys we got to an exciting part of this we're putting an appliance back in there's a toaster oven and it's got feet on it that screw in and we actually use these to attach it solidly in place here so they're painted over but there's a couple holes where the feet sit we'll drill a screw or screw a screw up through the wood, through the foot, into the toaster oven, and that's what holds it still. We'll go ahead and get that sucker plugged in now. We're ready to cook something. Beep, beep. Now we're gonna make a nice uh, faceplate cover for this thing. Yep, that looks pretty good. I'll tag this up and then we'll have it painted. So we got a good bit done yesterday. And then we realized that uh, it didn't get recorded. So I'm just gonna show you what we got. We started out in the corners here with this flexible PVC quarter round. And we ran it up along the corner and across the top, all the way around within the camper. We've got these PVC flats that are going across the top that cover up the screw holes from where we mounted the ceiling up. And then one of the biggest things is we have a floor done. Check that out. This is an LVP flooring. And the only thing left to get done on it is to put this quarter round along there. So we'll finish that quarter round trim out. We'll get the board cut for the bed placement here. We'll get the bed in, we'll get the cushions in, and the table in. We'll be done. Let's get started on that quarter round. Pretty good right there. Well guys, that's gonna wrap up the final trim video. We got a ton of this done, but we haven't done all of the final touches. So make sure you subscribe, because next video you see on this, we'll have those final touches in. We'll do a comparison from the pre-renovation to the new style, modern, shiplap camper. <laughs> so thanks again for watching. Y'all have a good one.